Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. Today we will discuss oxidative addition. In the last class we have seen the 16 electron and 18 electron complexes and the way they, they react. Today we will discuss one of the most interesting topic of organometallic complexes that is their oxidative addition. Now, how the oxidative addition occurs and what are the criteria and how the complexes are varying that is what is the topic of today's discussion. Now, if you look at the oxidative addition and if you try to deal with their rate law, then you will see if it is associative, if associative, then we will have first order with respect to A r x, oxidative addition is happening in A r x. If it is dissociative, if dissociative, then, then we will have zeroth order with respect to A r x. That is the first thing we will see. Now, if you look at based on the associative and dissociative mechanism, if you look at delta s double dagger, then we will see associative case will give you negative delta s and dissociative case will give you positive delta s double dagger. Most importantly also your molar volume in case of associative it will be decreasing and in case of dissociative it will be increasing right. Well, before getting into the discussion of the rate law delta s and the molar volume, let us try to discuss with some real example first. Now, let us take a generic example and that is L n m it is a organometallic complex that will form and you want to have oxidative addition of this ligand metal complex into A B. This is once again it is a generic example. You will end up getting L n M A and B. If the oxidation state of this one was n plus at the end of the reaction you will have n plus 2. So, change in oxidation state is plus 2, change in overall electron count from the starting material is again plus 2. So, total 2 electron count increasing, if this is a 16 electron complex, this one will be an 18 electron complex overall now. If the metal was having n plus oxidation state, it will then have n plus 2 oxidation state. Now, if that is true, what you would understand that this cannot be a D D 0 metal, because if it is a D 0 metal, then n plus 2 oxidation state will not be attained. So, it has to have more than 2 electron more than or equal to 2 D electron. Now, before going into the real example, let us try to take 
a non transition metal equivalent or non transition metal example. We have seen magnesium 0 reacting with any R x organic halide to give you R m g and x. This is magnesium 2 plus 0 oxidation state giving you plus 2 overall this is an oxidative addition example of an oxidative addition complex right. Now, let us try to get back to this A and B we are trying to discuss the generic reaction of ligand metal complex reacting with A B complex or A B organic species to give you ligand metal A B complexes. Now, we need to discuss what are the different variation of A and B. So, classes of A and B. We can have a polar A B or a non-polar A B and we can have something where we have multiple bond where A B bond will be retained. Let me give you an example it will be clear. So, polar compound could be x 2 x equals halogen or could be h x could be r x could be r c o x etcetera. These are polar a b non polar a b would be hydrogen silyl hydride various silyl hydride tin hydride and simple alkane and so on. A B bond can be written in oxygen during oxidative addition or if it is a carbonyl of or if it is an olefin or if it is an alkyne etcetera. So, three different classes of A B is possible A B could be polar, non polar or A B could be the one where after oxidative addition still A and B bond will be retained. In the polar and non polar example we have seen that this bond between A and B will be broken, but in these cases at least one bond will be written. Again the polar are x 2 h x r x r c o x acid chloride and so on hydrogen S i h S n h R h all these are non polar and you can see oxygen or carbonyl species olefin or alkyne if you are having oxidative addition then A and B bond will be retained. Now, there are three common pathways by which oxidative addition can occur three different pathways let me write them down three common pathways we see for oxidative addition. What are these? One could be concerted, another could be S n 2, of course the final one could be a radical one right. Three different pathways exist. Let us take an example or the first example we would like to discuss is the concerted one, concerted pathway. So, today's class mainly we will discuss this different mode of oxidative addition. The first one is the concerted one. Now, you can take once again a generic example L n m reacting with hydrogen to give you first a L n m sigma complex with hydrogen. Finally, it will gives rise to L n m H H. So, oxidative addition into hydrogen is happening you see the bond between the two hydrogen atom is broken in the final complex intermediate will be a sigma complex.
Now, would like to discuss one of the real example rather than defining or keeping the m as one of one of the non variant. Let us discuss this complex iridium complex. I think you are quite familiar with this complex iridium ditriphenyl phosphine carbonyl halide. Now, if it is x equals chloro, I think you might will know this complex and that is known as Vaskaj complex, right? Vaskaj complex. Now, this Vaskaj complex, if x equals chloro, can react with the hydrogen. Okay. Overall, it can give you from a tetra coordinated complex to a hexa coordinated complex. Okay. So, what we see here is this iridium tetra coordinated complex reacts with hydrogen to give you the hydrogen hydrogen bond broken species that is now it is a hydride. How can you prove that it is a hydride? If you take the 1 H NMR of this complex, you will see two peaks one as minus 18.4 ppm another is at minus 77.3 7 ppm. Thereby, this is again showing that this is a hydride in hydridic in nature this hydrogen are hydridic in nature. And if you have x equals chloro that is again the Vaskaj complex delta H for this reaction is found to be 10.8 kcal per mole and delta S double dagger for this reaction will be minus 23. Again this is confirming the fact that this 16 electron Vaskaj complex undergoing an associative mechanism to give you this 18 electron complex final complex. Further, how can you prove that these Vaskaj complex or Vaskaj type of complex where x is varying x equals chloro is Vaskaj complex is really the one which is giving you the oxidative addition in a way you are looking at in here. To figure that out what you can do is you can vary the x, x could be your iodo, bromo, chloro etcetera. So, the electronic properties of x will change and thereby you will see the relative rate of this iridium complex with respect to the hydrogen whether x equals iodo what is the rate of the relative rate of the reaction to bromo to chloro what is the relative rate of the reactions. Now, in order to do that you can design the experiment where x is varying observation wise experimental observation wise you can see when x equals iodo bromo or chloro of course, electronic properties or electronic properties um, you can see that it is lower in this case this is higher for chloride and the relative rate or relative reaction rate is great with respect to iodo and bromo is little bit slower and chloride is the slowest one. What it is telling you is the Vaskaj complex that is the chloro complex will react with hydrogen the slowest and the x when it is iodo it will be the fastest reaction right. Now, again we will get back to this concept of ln m reacting with a b in this case it was hydrogen if it is undergoing this interaction the transition state you will find is something like this from which you will get ln m a b formation. Now, if this intermediate or the transition state 
is not really a cationic or anionic in nature, ionic in nature, then you would expect that solvent polarity will have little effect on the rate of the reaction. For the concerted reaction, the type of reaction we have drawn over here is a concerted one. For concerted reaction, the in this transition state will have little effect or little bearing on the solvent polarity. So, if you change the solvent from polar to non-polar, your reaction rate will not vary too much in case of a concerted mechanism. So, this is one way to determine whether a reaction is undergoing a concerted reaction or not. To probe that once again, you can change the solvent. If the reaction rate is not varying too much, that will indicate that the oxidative addition is undergoing a concerted mechanism. Of course, the mechanism you cannot prove, it can suggest only you have to do other experiments to further prove any mechanism. Now, let us try to take an example, where in the last case we have seen a 16 electron complex is your starting material. You see an association of hydrogen with the 16 electron complex. So, hydrogen is coming and getting associated with your Vaskaj complex or the 16 electron complex, iridium complex. Now, what happens when you have an 18 electron complex? Can you have a concerted mechanism for an 18 electron complex and what could be one of the example? Let us try to give one of the example. Oxidative addition, which you can write down as OA of different silyl hydride, different alkane, etcetera, usually can undergo concerted mechanism. Well, let us take example of a manganese complex, cyclopentadiene tricarbonyl manganese complex. This is once again an 18 electron complex. We would like to react this with a silyl hydride, a chiral one. I will come in a moment, let us say this is a chiral silyl hydride. Enuncio pure, enuncio pure. Now, this 18 electron manganese complex, we would like to react with this silyl hydride. Of course, you know, if you want to directly do oxidative addition into the silyl hydride bond, then the complex you will get is 20 electron, which is unfavorable. The first step then, what we would like to do is, we would like to treat this with light. We can expect an elimination of CO to give us cyclopentanine manganese dicarbonyl species. From a trace carbonyl species, we now have a dicarbonyl species. Okay. From an 18 electron complex, we now have a 16 electron complex, which can then undergo oxidative addition into this silyl hydride bond to eventually give us this silyl complex, where you will will get the silyl metal bond formation with the hydride being there and C p C o 2. So, we have manganese complex with cyclopentadiene, two carbonyl, one carbonyl went out during treatment with light and now the manganese is inserted in between the silyl and hydride bond. Okay. So, we have manganese hydride complex with silyl bound with manganese. Most importantly, what you will see is there it is undergoing a retention of configuration. The final complex will retain 
the stereochemistry of the starting silyl hydride. So, concerted mechanism in this case a manganese complex which is an 18 electron complex reacting with silyl hydride a enantio pure silyl hydride to give finally, the 18 electron complex it does not react via an associative pathway rather it undergoes a dissociative mechanism where the starting manganese complex loses one of the carbon monoxide during treatment of light to give you manganese dicarbonyl cyclopentadiene species which then react with silyl hydride to give you silyl hydride oxidative intermediate with manganese where we have the final complex once again manganese with cyclopentadiene, two carbonyl, one hydride and one silyl moiety. Most importantly this oxidative addition complex retain the stereochemistry of the starting material. So, stereochemistry can be retained during the oxidative addition if it is undergoing a concerted mechanism. We will come to the other example which are SN2 in nature or radical in nature, then in those cases you will be able to see what happens with the stereochemistry of the A B that is the organic species where we will undergo the oxidative addition. Now, as you see there is one example we have shown how light can be used to remove carbon monoxide. So, the unsaturation or coordinative unsaturation is promoted by signing light on the metal complex. So, the unsaturation was not there into the organometallic species, unsaturation is created by the mean of an external source in this case light. Is it possible to create this coordinative unsaturation to the metal complex by other means? Answer is yes, it is possible we can have various approaches or various chemical reaction for these cases. For example, if we want to remove various other groups, then we can have various other ways to generate coordinative, coordinative unsaturation. For example, you have seen if you want to remove carbon monoxide, the method you are using is light. If you want to use or remove halide, you can of course, use the famous silver cation. If you want to remove alkyl, you can use proton. If you want to remove hydride, you can use this one, right. So, there are four different ways for example, of course, there are many more. Clearly, you can remove a particular group from an organometallic intermediate. These are the usual practices. For example, if you have, you know, I think it is very clear, if you have LNMX, you can react with silver plus to get ln m plus and silver halide and so on. Okay. So, what we have seen so far is a concerted mechanism and in this concerted mechanism we have seen one example each of 16 electron complex and 18 electron complex, how the A B the organic species is undergoing oxidative addition with 16 electron and 18 electron complex. Next briefly I will discuss S N 2 mechanism of 
oxidative addition. Of course, we will discuss both SN2 and radical mechanism. Today, in next 5 minutes or so, I will try to briefly discuss SN2 mechanism. We will come back to that topic again in the next class. SN2 mechanism, as you would know, the ligand metal complex can react with A and your B in a way we have seen traditional organic reaction of SN2 type to give you ln m a, which is now an n electron complex let us say. It was also an n electron complex. Of course, you are having B minus generated from this species. N electron complex undergoing reaction with A B in an S N 2 fashion, where L N M A bond is formed and B minus comes out. Finally, you can have overall L N M A B and A complex. So, A B is now incorporated with metal to give you n plus 2 electron complex. The first step as you can see n electron complex will form the n electron complex. Now, we have interaction with m and a then eventually this b minus will coordinate with m to give you ln m b a complex which is now n plus 2 electron complex. So, you can imagine that such examples will be easy with something like methyl iodide. If A and B is methyl and iodide respectively or methyl iodide will have such oxidative addition where SN2 reaction mechanism will be followed. Of course, you know if you have tertiary butyl fluoride this will not undergo the SN2 mechanism. Well, in the next class, we will discuss much more about this SN2 reaction, their reactivity pattern will give you the organometallic complex and the real complex and their example and discuss the mechanism of SN2 complex. We will also discuss in the next class the concerted mechanism versus SN2 mechanism and radical mechanism. Once again, the oxidative addition can be of three different type concerted, the one which we discussed today, SN2, which we were discussing right now, and we will continue in the next class. Again, in the next class, we will try to discuss the radical mechanism for oxidative addition reaction. Okay, see you in the next one. Till then, bye bye. Hello, Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India. Yeah.